Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. Today, I want to look at a way that you can talk about home spaces, view them via the notion of tensor products. And this is a very, very interesting application of tensor products, which allows you to uh, look at something which is uh, fairly f familiar from usual linear algebra classes. Okay, so what we're going to start off with is a certain evaluation map, and it's going to generalize the natural contraction map that we saw between a vector space and its dual. Okay, so what we're going to start with are two uh, uh, vector spaces, V and W, over this field F. And what's the evaluation map here? Okay, so the evaluation map is the following one here. Okay, so we're going to have two vector spaces. Firstly, the first one is the vector space of linear maps from V to W, HOM V to W. And the second vector space here is V, so we can take the tense product of these two vector spaces. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, map this over to W. Okay, so the V appears twice here and the W once here. And these Vs will get contracted somehow and leave you just a W like that. Okay, so how does that work? Okay, so suppose you have an elementary tensor inside here. Okay, so suppose you have uh, F is a linear map from V to W, and V is a side V. Then what can you map this to? Okay, you can map this to, well, this is in the domain of this F, so you can uh, substitute in V and evaluate this F at V. And that, of course, is going to be some uh, vector inside W here. Okay, so this is F of V inside W. And, of course, if you want to try to see, uh, is there such a linear map like this, what do you need to do? You just have to check that this, as a function of F and V, it's linear in both F and V. So it's uh, bilinear in uh, HOM V to W cross V. Okay, and that's quite easy to see. And it's the same as for the usual pairing that I showed you between V and V star. Okay, so let's look at a very, very simple example of what's going on here, okay? So let's suppose these uh, uh, vector spaces are just uh, uh, Rn and Rm. So here we have HOM, say Rn to Rm. And you're going to tensor this with the domain here, which is Rn. And the evaluation maps this to where the codomain is here, Rm. Okay, so what's going on here? Uh, what you basically have is an elementary tensor like this. So V here is just an n-tuple, okay? And what is A? A is just an n by n matrix, okay? So that's how every linear map from Rn to Rm is represented by a matrix here. And then, of course, when you have an n by n matrix and uh, an n-tuple V, what you can do is you can multiply them together, A, V, and this will be an m-tuple, so an element inside here. Okay, and of course you can see that as a function of A and as a function of V, it's linear in A and it's linear in V. And this is because of the distributive law of matrix multiplication and also the fact that it's um, how it behaves with scalars. Okay, there's an associativity property there as well. Okay, so this is a very simple example of this evaluation map and you, as you can see it's no more complicated than just matrix multiplication in this case. So it's a very, very simple sort of thing. And it's called evaluation because basically you substitute a function and an input for the function, and you evaluate that function at that input to give you the output here. Okay, so what's the proposition which will allow us to uh, use this in an interesting fashion? Okay, so what we're going to do now is the following. Okay, so suppose we're given a linear map phi from x tensor v to w here. Okay, what I claim now is that if you use this, you can get a linear map from x to hom to v uh, to w. Okay. So how does this work? So what's this uh, linear map over here? Okay, so what should we do is we input something inside x here. And what I need to do is to give a linear map from v to w. Okay, so what's this a linear map from v to w? So it's going to be the following. It's going to be v gets mapped to what? Well, what can you do? You've got this function phi from x tensor v to w, so you can look at phi of x tensor v. Okay, so you put in one input, and then you put in a second input, that allows you to form x tensor v, and you uh, evaluate that uh, um, phi at that elementary tensor. Okay, and so the key point is that why does this actually give you a, firstly, uh, why is this a linear map here? Okay, so no, note, so note, so in proposition one, 
So the first thing is that this is linear. So v to phi of x tends to v is linear. And why is that linear? Okay, so basically because, well, here what you have, uh, x tends to v as a function of the second variable, it's linear. Okay, so that's how tensor products work. It's going to be linear in the second variable. And then you apply this linear function on, uh, to, to it. So this is, of course, linear in v as well, being the composite of linear functions. Okay, and then the other thing that you have to check is that this is actually, um, uh, phi tilde itself is linear. Also, uh, phi tilde linear. Okay, so how do you check that? Well, for example, you want to check that this is uh, preserves addition. Okay, so how do you check that this preserves addition? So let's uh, uh, suppose you have a sum of x's. Okay, well, the point is that uh, this tensor product is bilinear, so it preserves sums. And since it preserves sums here, okay, phi of this also preserves sums, so this preserves addition. Okay, and this gives us the full Hom tensor adjunction a junction in the case of tensor products of vector spaces. Okay, so let's see how that works. Okay, so suppose we consider maps of this form, phi inside here, okay? So they're linear maps, so they're elements of HOM of uh, x tensor v to w. And then what do we get? We get a linear map from x to this HOM space here. HOM from x to HOMs from V to W. Okay. So this here is going to be uh, the, the codomain of a map, okay, which sends phi here gets mapped to phi tilde. And the Hom tensor junction says what? It says that actually this is an isomorphism of vector spaces, okay? So this is extremely interesting. So what you see here is you have this HOM space is isomorphic to this HOM space. So this is HOM coming out of a tensor product, x tensor v uh, to w. And what happens is, what's the difference between these two? So firstly, this tensor now, this tensor by v, gets shifted over to the other side. The x stays here. Okay, the w stays over here. But now you have in, that v now becomes a HOM from v to w. And this gives you the all-important HOM tensor adjunction formula. Proposition 2 here gives us a promised link between home spaces on one hand and tensor products. Okay, so this is a fact that unfortunately requires uh, the vector spaces to be finite dimensional. Okay, so suppose W and V here are finite dimensional vector spaces over our field F. Then W tensor V star is isomorphic to uh, the vector space of homomorphisms from V to W. And let me show you what that homomorphism is. Okay, so to give a map like this, I just need to tell you where the elementary tensors go. And in this case, W tensor V star will go to what? So I have to give you a homomorphism V to W, a function from V to W. So if you input V, what output element inside W do you have? Well, it's the following one. Okay, so you're going to get some multiple of W here. And what is that scalar multiple of W? Well, you can evaluate V at V, um, V star rather, at V. So V star of V, this is a linear map on V uh, with uh, scalar values. So V star of V is just some scalar. And you multiply that scalar by W to get you something inside here. So this elementary tensor will give you, um, it turns out, a linear map from V to W. And if you consider this map for all these uh, tensors, okay, you'll get an isomorphism of vector spaces. Okay, So let's see why this is true, and it's quite interesting. So I guess firstly I should check that we have this linear map here. And it's quite interesting actually how we get this linear map. Okay, So we could prove it directly that it's linear, there's no problem with that, but I want to use a little bit of theory that we've set up so far. Okay, so what's that theory? So uh, let's have a look at this triple tensor product, W tensor V star tensor V. Okay, so remember I put the I put the brackets here like this, but you have the associativity of tensor products, so I don't need to put the brackets in there. So in particular, I could have bracketed the V star tensor with the V, okay, and then V star tensor with V I can contract to F, okay, and so using functoriality I can do the identity on W and contract V star tensor V to F, and of course now you have the unit property, so V star V uh, W rather tensor F is isomorphic naturally just to W. So at the end of the day, I have a linear map from where to where? From this triple tensor product to this W. So you have a linear map from W tensor V star 
tensor V, so this tensor product of this tensor product here with V to W. And what do we see about the proposition one? We have uh, this home tensor reduction. If you have a, a linear map from a tensor product to W, that gives you a linear map from this first tensor factor here to homs between from V to W. Okay, so this W tensor V star, you get a homomorphism from here, a linear map from here, to homomorphisms from V to W, from here to here. And if you just work out what that is, using the proof of this proposition 1 here, you'll find that this is precisely what the map does here, okay? So we get this quite easily, this, um, this linear map here, it follows naturally just from the contraction map and from proposition 1, okay? So that's rather nice. So, okay, so we have a linear map, but of course, at the moment, we don't even know whether it's zero or not, okay? So, of course, the interesting fact is that it's actually an isomorphism. So this vector space of linear maps, you can recast using tensor products, okay? So why is that true? And the way we'll prove that is that we'll just show that uh, this psi here sends a basis here over to a basis here. So what's a basis for this tensor product here? Well, what we do is we pick a, a basis for W, say these are WJs, Okay, and a basis for the uh, V star. So suppose we have a basis first for V, V i's, and these V upper i's now are the dual basis for V star here. Okay, so what we need to check is that um, psi of the basis. Okay, so what's a basis for this? So basically, a basis considered, uh, consists of elementary tensors, which is the tensor products of basis elements. So you can have W j tensor VI is a basis okay, for this uh, vector space of homomorphisms, of linear maps. Okay? So why is that? So let's see uh, what this does. So this is going to be a linear map from V to W. So let's see what this does on basis vectors inside V. So this is VK. Okay, so let's see what this does. Okay, so when we put this into here, okay, uh, we map this over to here, and we're inputting VK. So we put VK into here. Uh, so the V star here, in this case, is VI. So this is VI of VK, and that's WJ. Okay, so what's happening here? Okay, so what does this equal? This is just the, since these are dual bases, this is just delta IK of W. Okay, so let's have a little think about what this particular linear map does, this linear map from V to W, okay? What does it do on the basis, okay? So basically, what you'll find is that um, this is almost always zero except when K equals I, okay? So basically, it will send every basis vector to zero except the ith basis vector. And where will it send the ith basis vector? It will send the ith basis vector of V to the jth basis vector of W. Okay, so essentially it sends the ith basis vector of V to the jth uh, basis vector of W, and all the other basis vectors inside V it sends to zero. Okay, so of course you can also look at this as a um, I being isomorphic to a vector space of matrices. Okay. And the way you do that is you pick a basis for V, so let's say this is V lower I, and a basis for this, this is the W lower J. And if you think about what does this map do here, this is the standard matrix unit, okay? If you have the standard basis for matrices, okay, which has a one in uh, the ijth entry and a zero everywhere else, okay? If you look at all those matrices, that will form a basis. And if you think about what is the corresponding uh, element inside here, the types of vector, uh, the types of linear maps you'll get are the ones which precisely send all basis elements to zero except for one, and uh, it sends that basis element to a different basis element, okay? So that's what happens when you're inside um, uh, n by n matrices, okay? If you have one, exactly one location, it sends, uh, say, the ith standard basis vector to the jth standard basis vector, okay? And all the other standard basis vectors get sent to zero. Okay, so this actually shows you the, that uh, this basis here gets set, sent to the standard basis of matrix units, and hence, since the bases coincide, this is actually an isomorphism of vector spaces. Okay, so that's rather nice. This is a direct proof. Of course, you might want to say, well, is there a way to actually write down the inverse nicely? Okay, so we're actually going to do that. Let's write down what the inverse, psi inverse, from... Uh, Hom V W 
to uh, W tensor V star. And the way I can write this out, the easiest way actually, is the following. Instead of writing this at W tensor V star, remember this is naturally isomorphic to um, W star tensor V. If you take the dual of this, right, the dual of this is going to be what? It's basically going to be naturally isomorphic to the dual of W, which is naturally isomorphic to W, tends to the dual of V, which is precisely this here. Okay, And then what does this map to? And in this case, we can actually construct what the map is going to be. So basically here, if you have a linear map like this here, so let's call it um, phi, it gets mapped to what? So this should be a linear map on... Uh, let's say uh, W star tensor V, so suppose you have a W uh, star tensor V here, where does it get sent to? Well, what you can do is you can look at phi of V, okay, uh, phi of V will land you inside W, so you can evaluate it at W star. Okay, and that will get you uh, a scalar, okay. So this will turn out to be a linear map, so this will actually give you the inverse to this uh, isomorphism side that I've written here, okay? And that's rather nice. Okay, so to finish up, I want to show you a rather r interesting um, feature of this isomorphism that you get, okay? So how does this work? Okay, so what is this? So this uh, vector space F, okay, it naturally maps to what? Uh, it naturally maps to end V, okay? So why is that? you can always take alpha to alpha times the identity. Okay, and this end V is just home from V to V. So this is also naturally isomorphic to uh, V tensor V star. So curiously, you have a natural map which is from F to V tensor V star. So why do I mention this? Uh, because before we saw a contraction map which goes from V star tensor V to F, okay? And that's just a special case of the evaluation map, okay? In this case, we have a map going up in the opposite direction from F to V tensor V star, okay? And actually, in some ways, they're dual to each other. They play um, similar roles to each other, okay? So, of course, you might say, well, that's rather interesting. What is the map from here to here? How do you write it down? Can you write it down nicely? And so, of course... Uh, if you pick bases for this, of course, this corresponds to the, uh, the diagonal matrix, right, which has ones down the diagonals. So what this turns out is it, it turns out that this will map to alpha times the sum of uh, VI tensor V upper I like that. Okay, so V upper I, and these are a basis for V star. That's a dual basis to the V lower I, which is a basis for that. Okay, so there's a map from here to here, which is linear, and it sends alpha to alpha times this sum over here. Okay, and what's really remarkable is, of course, well, you can you just um, see uh, using a calculation that the identity under this map psi here corresponds to this. Okay, but of course, we chose a basis for V i here, uh, for V here, and a dual basis. Okay. So what's really interesting is that, of course, you could have changed the basis for V, and in so doing, you'll get a different dual basis, so that'll give you a corresponding change in the basis over here. But this formula doesn't change at all, okay? This formula won't change, because in all of this, what you find is that this isomorphism here does not depend on the choice of the basis, okay? It's just naturally defined. There's no uh, involvement of picking a basis to actually define any of these maps. So even though the formula that I've written down here involves the choice of basis, uh, this expression is actually independent of the choice of basis we picked for V, okay? which is really, really a, an interesting fact. Okay, so um, yeah, so why is it uh, doesn't it depend on V? Well, you look at how it's constructed. Okay, we really only use the basis to show that this is an isomorphism. Okay, so that's the only place where the basis gets used. I hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics.